Hi everyone, my name is Steven Weigel, and today we're going to review two really important types of music theory. One type is called post-tonal theory, which is probably something you will learn about in college or have already learned if you are a music student. The second type of theory is a more recent development called LS notation informally, which is more useful in microtonal scale understanding. These videos document the connections I've discovered between the two theories. First, let's go over post-tonal theory. Post-tonal theory arose as an explanation for the writing of dodecaphonic music, or music that uses all 12 notes of our piano in equal measure. This method was created so that the idea of tonality could be avoided in the music. The 12 tone method is why you see these little 12 by 12 squares that show all the possibilities, among other kinds of drawings. In post-tonal theory, each letter on the piano is simply labeled with a number. This number is called a pitch class. A pitch class is also the same in every octave, so that it makes the most sense to connect it to the letters, which also don't specify the octave. In math, we can just use mod 12 to accomplish this. If a number in post-tonal falls outside the range 0 to 11, we just add or subtract 12 repeatedly until it does fall within that range. These pitch classes are then treated like sets, and then they're called, you guessed it, pitch class sets. Pitch class sets can be transposed and inverted. We just use math now to describe it instead of using the letters. To transpose, we just add or subtract by a certain amount, and to invert, we subtract 12 from everything, or we can write the step sizes backwards, starting from any pitch class. Those are some of the easiest ideas from this theory. Alan Ford, a famous theorist, even wrote down all of the pitch class sets in 12 equal, and in case you were wondering how many there are, there's 224 of them. Now, Mr. Fort could have written out more sets, but all of his start on zero. So that means he could have written them all out starting with 12 different numbers, but I guess he thought that was a waste of time, as do I, you don't need to transpose everything. Now, writing things out from zero is the standard fare in set theory, and so is using normal order and prime form. Normal order and prime form are just two ways of writing pitch class sets, so let's try it. Normal orders are just the most compact way of writing out the set. To find that out, we cycle the set. Cycling just means sliding the scale over onto each note one at a time, just like finding modes of the diatonic scale. So cycles and modes are really just the same thing. Let's try an example. Say I have the notes uh, G flat, D, B, and F. Okay, as letters, that could be written as 2, 5, 6, and 11. Um, oh, and let's put those in uh, those cute little brackets on the ends. Uh, now let's see what all the possibilities are. And there, it looks like 11, 2, 5, 6 is the most compact. Here's what that cycling looks like on the piano. See how when the perfect fifth is on the outside, the shape is the smallest? That's the most compact. You can also spot the most compact cycle of something by looking at the steps in the scale, and then the largest step just needs to be the step from the last note in the set to the first note in the set. So that's normal order! Now how is prime form different? There are two important ways. One, a prime form always starts on zero. So you're taking it from zero. Number two, a prime form is not only compacted the most from the first pitch class to the last pitch class, like a normal order, but it is also compacted the most to the left. This takes inversion into account. This means that a major chord and a minor chord both have the same prime form, for example, and the minor chord is the prime form. See? Oh, and we also write prime forms in parentheses, not brackets. Now let's try turning our normal order that we had, 11, 2, 5, 6, into a prime form. We already know that it is the most compacted from the first note to the last one, because it has to be that from normal order. Now we just need to invert it and see if the inversion is compacted more to the left. Whichever version is more compacted to the left is the prime form. 
But first, let's transpose the normal order to zero to make things easier. 11 plus one is zero. Remember, we're in mod 12, so we can add all the other pitch classes by one also. Our new set here is now zero, three, six, seven. Now, when we write it backwards, we start on the 7, and head in the opposite direction. This is to check the inversion. And then we have 7, 8, 11, 2. Well, let's transpose that to 0 as well, and here we go! These are the two contenders for our prime form, the normal order and its inversion, starting from 0. Now, 0, 1, 4, 7 is more compact to the left than 0, 3, 6, 7. It's easy to spot this one because of the size of 1 here, the half step. And now that you know what a prime form is, you know that it is the basic unit for understanding pitch class sets. That is, each prime form is sort of understood to have unique content. And that's also why Fort chose to list the 224 prime forms of 12 tone. But what if we want to use... Uh, a different number of notes than 12 in our music? Ooh, uh-oh. Big problem or not. What would happen in post-tonal if we used a different number of notes? Well, in equal tunings, we could just change the mod number to the equal tuning number. If we had 14 equal, we could use mod 14. If we had 19 equal, we could use mod 19, etc. But then we get these annoyances where we have to rethink the sizes for all of the intervals. And that's not the worst thing in the world, but there's a better way to do it. You know, four steps is a major third in 12 tone, but what is it in 18 tone? You know, four eighteenths of an octave? Hmm, you know, there's a bit more thinking involved, and a non-equal tuning gets a lot harder with that method. This is why the microtonal community has favored using LS notation, the second theory I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's really simple. You just find the intervallic content in a scale, but you represent the same numbers as the same letter. It's like a variable. L is for large, S is for small, M is for middle, and because scales with many amounts of steps aren't often discussed, small m's with subscripts are used for even more kinds of steps as more middles. But let's quit middling around and try an LS example. Here's the diatonic scale in 12 equal. The ones are a small step, and the twos are a large step. Okay then, so there's five large and two small, and we can name that by the letters, just 5L2S. 5L2S is sometimes a diatonic scale, and sometimes not. Depends on what order the L's and S's are in. If L and S were close to the same, for example, it could sound like something closer to seven equal, because they're you know, close to the same size, and there's seven steps. The LS format describes something within one octave, by the way, just like any pitch class set. So, 5L2S just means there are five large steps and two small steps in one octave. This kind of format works really well in equal temperaments, where the L and S need to be integers, and most of this discussion will be about equal temperaments. Then, uh, the number of L times L plus number of S times S equation yields the equal temperament, or ET of the octave. That's what I'm going to label equal temperament with ET. You can also do this with cents for unequal tunings, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Basically, there are 1,200 cents in an octave, and you should look it up. Now, let's try a scale that doesn't exist in 12 equal, like 03L4S. If I plug in 1s for S and 2s for L, I can see that the smallest equal tuning that can play a 3L4S scale is a 10 equal. Cool! Or L could be 3 and it would be 13 equal, or L is 3 and S is 2, etc. I have a lot of possibilities here. So this LS theory is more useful for describing scales than chords with a low number of notes. Uh, in the current discussion, most of us consider five note scales or more to be scales worth exploring. Uh, describing the intervallic relationships of a scale is closer to the thing itself than post-tonal. It's just that with LS, we can flip between tunings on a whim or describe multiple tunings at once. This is so perfect for the emancipation of pitch. I mean, dissonance. Ooh, Schoenberg is rolling over in his grave, I'm sure. Oh, by the way, those are real quotes.
To find out more dark secrets about the future of music theory, please watch the other videos in this series.